Hey guys, Josh here and welcome back to Rune Factory 5. In today's video, I would like to talk about the different characters you can invite in your party, especially the ones that have unique abilities or behavior, and hopefully that will help you in building your dream team for your adventures around Rigbar. First, I'll cover a few bits of general information that I think you should know, then I'll go over the characters I find the most interesting and explain why. Keep in mind, all the characters that can join your party in this game have the potential to be strong given the right equipment and once their level is high enough, and having someone in your party will increase your friendship every hour spent together, so by any means, if you think a villager looks cool or if you want to develop a strong relationship quickly with them, I recommend you go ahead and invite them in your party. If a villager is not included in this video, it's not that they're a bad party member or anything, it's just that this video is to showcase specifically the characters that I found to have a somewhat unique or different behavior. If there is a specific villager that you find interesting that I did not include in this video, feel free to let me know in the comments. Alright, so let's keep going. So to invite someone in your party, you need to talk to them, then press L or R to open a menu in which you should have the option to ask them to join you on your adventure. You can invite up to 3 villagers or monsters in your party at all time, and in order for a villager to join you, you need to have a friendship of at least level 3. If your friendship is level 2 or lower, you can still convince them to join you, but you'll need to have the companion quest equipped, which is unlocked after completing all of the 1 star wanted monster requests from Livia. There are, however, a few exceptions to keep in mind. Randolph can join you from the very start, so you don't need a level 3 friendship or the companion quest, and that makes him a valuable partner in the beginning. Priscilla won't have the courage to join you until you complete the romance event in which you help her gather mushrooms in the woods. No matter how high your friendship is or if you have the companion quest, you need to finish that event first. There are also two characters that will never join you no matter what, and those are Olivia and Yuki. So that's it for the exceptions. Also, in case you didn't know, you can upgrade any villager's equipment, such as weapon and armor, simply by giving it to them. Don't forget to do that, otherwise they will get pretty useless in combat very quickly. I will be making some videos eventually on crafting and upgrading equipment to get the best out of everything, but for now keep in mind that the weapon type a character starts with is their preferred weapon type, and they will do better with that one, so try to stick to the correct weapon type for each villager. Now that the basics are covered, let's start. As I said, a great party member at the beginning is Randolph. Not only can he join you from the very start, but he will also take care of replenishing his own health by eating bread, and unfortunately he won't be sharing any of that bread with you, but at least you won't have to worry too much about healing him, especially at the beginning of the game when you don't have any healing spells. Another character you won't have to worry about healing is Heinz, he will also be eating a lot of food to replenish his health, same as Randolph, he won't be sharing any of his food, but he's still a pretty good character to have in your party because you don't have to worry about healing him. On the other hand, if you'd like a partner who's a bit less selfish, you can go for Priscilla, who will heal the entire party if someone's health gets too low. She's one of the first healers you can have, so just make sure you complete her romance event as soon as you can, and you'll find her to be extremely useful. Also keep in mind that for all characters using healing spells, the higher their level is, the better their healing spells will be. Another character that can replenish your health, but not as well, is Scarlet. So from time to time she will throw potions at you, which will recover either 150 or 800 HP. This is pretty helpful at first, however, after reaching a certain point, even the 800 HP potions won't make much of a difference. And it's unfortunate, because even as Scarlet's level gets higher, she does not seem to be throwing better potions. So she's a lot more useful early in game, and as opposed to villagers that heal the whole party at once with a spell, just like Priscilla, Scarlet will either throw a potion at you or drink it for herself, so her technique is not the most efficient because she can only heal characters one by one. However, she makes up for this with another special ability that she has and that's the spell seal. So she will sometimes use it on enemies, freezing them for a few seconds and that can be useful in combat when there are lots of monsters. Scarlet is actually not the only character that likes throwing items, let's take a quick look at the others. First, there's Simon. Simon loves throwing mushrooms, filled dishes and object X at enemies. She'll spend most of her time in combat throwing these items, so object X will inflict various status ailments to an enemy. Mushrooms may replenish a bit of their health, but will also inflict status ailments and failed dishes will reduce their health. Sometimes she'll also drink a potion or throw it at you, replenishing either 150, 800 or sometimes 3000 HP. I've never seen Scarlet using the 3000 HP potion, so Simon is a bit better for that. 
I would say she's one of my favorite companions because she's pretty balanced between dealing damage, afflicting status effects, and healing. Similarly, Terry will also throw mushrooms, failed dishes, and also object X at enemies. However, his ratio of time spent throwing items versus attacking the enemies is a lot lower than Simon. So I would say Simon spends maybe 50% of her time throwing items, but for Terry it's maybe under 25%, so he's gonna be spending a lot more time actually attacking the enemies with his weapon. These are not exact numbers, just my general observations, but Terry spends a lot more time fighting than throwing items. Also, as far as I know, he does not have any potions. Another item thrower, which a lot of you probably already know about, is Elshe. She's a bit lazy, so she doesn't help too much in combat, she won't attack a monster unless she's being attacked first. However, if your health is low, she will throw food at you, which is great for recovering HP and RP. From time to time, she will throw at you a royal curry, which can be sold for 500,000 G, which is an insane amount of money, especially at the beginning. If you want to make money quickly, just keep in mind that this will make the game a lot easier, but here's what I think is an easy way to use this strategy. So just make a few failed dishes by cooking a recipe using the wrong ingredients, and eat them until you have about a quarter of your health left. Next, simply go to an area where monsters are weak and will deal zero damage to both you and Elshe. However, don't fight the monsters as you need to be in combat for Elshe to actually throw food at you. And that's the same for all of the characters I mentioned in this video, they need to be in combat in order for them to heal you or throw items. So just make sure Elshe is in combat stance and then when you see her holding the royal curry, just get ready and as soon as she throws it, press R to dodge and go left or right. And then just go back and pick up the curry. And it's important to dodge it, otherwise your character will eat it automatically. And just put it in your shipping bin and the next day you will be 500,000 G richer. So I wouldn't say she's very useful in combat, but if you want easy money, Elshe is a great friend to bring along. One character who is very useful in combat is Ludmila. You will see her using a lot of dark rune abilities. She also has a 50% elemental resistance to dark, while most other characters only have a 25% resistance in one of the elements. So she's pretty good for that. And on top of that, Ludmilla will also heal the whole party with a spell, similarly to Priscilla. So it does take a little while before Ludmilla moves into Rigbart and you can finally invite her in your party. But as soon as you can, she's a fantastic character to have follow you along. Lucas is also pretty good in terms of elemental resistance as he has a 25% resistance to light, 0% to love, but 10% for everything else. He also uses a lot of rune abilities in combat, so he's a little bit similar to Ludmilla. However, he won't be healing you. And before we get to our last and I think my favorite companion, I would like to give an honorable mention to Darak who starts at level 30, which makes him a strong companion from the beginning. And if you have a Rune Factory 4 special save file on your Switch, the same applies to Doug and Margaret. But we need to talk a bit more about Margaret, as she might be the very best. Not only does she start at level 30, but also she heals the whole party with her spells, just like Priscilla and Lunmila. On top of that, she will cure status ailments party members have, which as far as I know, it's something no one else does. And then she also afflicts status ailments to enemies with her magic, just like Terry and Simon do with their mushrooms and object X. She also seems to be balancing all of these things fairly well, and I found her very useful to have around. It's just a shame that she's not available to all players. So that's pretty much it guys, these are the characters that I found to have the most interesting and valuable behaviors, and that you might consider having in your party in Rune Factory 5. As I said at the beginning of the video, everyone can be a good party member with the right equipment and as you progress in the game, the differences between the characters won't be as important. For example, the potions from Scarlet won't be helping too much after one point and you can just give any of your partners weapons that inflict status ailments and after that, Simon, Terry and Margaret won't be as unique anymore. But overall, I think that these are still useful things to know. I hope you learned something in this video. Let me know who's your favorite partner, leave a like and subscribe for more Rune Factory 5 content like this, and I'll see you all in the next video.